protocol having been established is still in force. So let me get myself together. I'm surprised I was called so early <laughs> because um, they say the last shall be first and the first shall be last. I was pleased this morning to have been invited to this program. I am aware that there was some difficulty in communicating with me, but I wouldn't have liked to miss this activity for anything because I believe if we are going to improve the system, we, even if we do not come to share, you must be able to listen and at some later date make a contribution. The literature has clearly indicated that socioeconomic development relates in a significant way to the standard and level of education. It therefore means that the functionaries in the education sector must find a way to ensure that education plays a meaningful role. Last evening, I listened to the State of the Union address by the President of the United States. And I particularly was impressed when he said, give America back to Americans. I was impressed by that because I said then to, we must do what we have to do to ensure that everyone in Guyana benefits from the education sector. And then I also listened to Dr. Leland Lucas. Leland, I think, is his name of the School of Entrepreneurship, Business, and Innovation. And he was presenting information as to the existence of the school. And one thing he said I was very impressed by, he said that the school is existing and the school wishes to be responsive to the needs of Guyana. A very important statement. Right away, one recognizes that in the regular school system too, it is necessary for things to be so done, for reform or movement or change or improvement to be informed by research. On another forum, I said that the time has come for us in this country to have extensive manpower surveys. Yes. I go further than that. We must also have extensive community surveys. Yes. Why am I saying this? Why I said that before? Training now has to be more specific, more deliberate, and more relevant. Right. How do we know how many persons we need in any kind of discipline. And because of my sojourn throughout the country in the last how many months, I want to use tech work as an example. I also want to use the Hayes, the Hinterland program as an example. In my view, the Hinterland program has been successful to a degree. Why? Because the young people who are trained are trained specifically to do things that are relevant to their communities. In the case of TechVoc, several functionaries have suggested that the many institutions that exist in this regard must have primarily a core of subjects that they will do. And the institution is, for example, Maikoni, must prepare students and workers primarily, not only primarily,
for the industries and the businesses that exist in the communities. The regional democratic councils have to play a major role. The neighboring councils have to play a major role. The CEO spoke about partnerships. Brother Scott here spoke about the new landscape. All those are relevant. But we've got to do things that are meaningful. The president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana speaks regularly of the good life. I asked some very important people what they understood by the good life. And they said, having a good home, having money, and so on and so on. I believe all those are relevant. And I believe the education sector believes this is relevant. Those are relevant. But then it's a very important question. How is it possible for the young man in a wheelchair to experience the good life? Is it possible for the person who is visually impaired to experience the good life? Is it possible for the person who is hearing impaired to experience the good life? What am I saying? I'm trying to preach, as I've done in several other places, the business of inclusive education, the business of paying attention to our challenged. Why am I saying this? If we don't find a way to make these people employable, we will not have a good life. Because much more resources will have to be placed in order to make them fairly comfortable. It means that the education sector at all levels have to find a way to craft and create programs that will be relevant to the challenged. Yeah. I was once the chairman of the Ministerial Task Force of Co-ops. And I said at one meeting that we have a problem. We are talking but not acting. And I was referring to in Church Street or Church Road, just not too far, not too far from GWI, it's a nice place where persons can go in, sit, and chat. But there's no room for someone who is using a pair of crutches or a wheelchair. Are these persons not Guyanese or human beings? You've got to pay attention to them. Yeah. You've got to ensure that when we speak about the changing landscape, when we speak about improving the socioeconomic status of persons, let us not forget those who are challenged. I, at another forum, suggested that the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health need to work closer because there are many persons who are challenged, who are hidden behind curtains in homes, who are locked in bedrooms, who don't see light outside. We have to work to correct that. We have to change attitudes. So when we speak about reform, reform with respect to attitudes, that too is important. Why she give me that? <laughs> so we need to find a way we need to find a way to have those persons who are born with some kind of deficiency to be so recorded in a database that we can keep on top of them, so to speak, and ensure that they benefit from the education sector and the education system. And just one last point. We've got to be creative. We ban cell phones in many schools this is a real odd point, but I want to make it. The time has come. He's speaking about reform. The time has come for us to show, to first of all, train our teachers how to use the cell phone.
to do academic work. And having trained them to do that, then train the children, the students, and the pupils to use that device to do additional work. Don't let us remove from them something they like. Let us use what they like to teach them and thus develop our country. Thank you very much.